Morning, I'm sitting here wondering what to paint as usual. I'll, I'll be something made up. Uh, I'm thinking it's uh, Christmas in three weeks time and it's cold in London at the moment. We've had quite a bit of frosty starts. Uh, so I'm thinking of doing a, a sort of a, an early winter snow in late autumn. Why not? For want of a title, mainly because I like these siennas and the reds in the in the foliage and the greens, of course. And I use a lot of burnt burnt sienna. Uh, burnt sienna is, it seems to me to be a very dark red, and it's a very good complement to the green, of course. Uh, so there's my palette: lemon yellow, raw sienna, alizarin crimson, light red, ultramarine, burnt umber, paints grey, burnt umber, uh, burnt sienna. I don't use a lot of this. This one. I can get that really with uh, the Payne's Grey and the Burnt Sienna, but I do use the Burnt Sienna, uh, Burnt Umber in mud and, and uh, sand mixed with a bit of raw Sienna. These are student quality paints, they come in 21mm tubes, Kopfman watercolours, made by Windsor and Newton. Uh, Fabriano, £130, uh, 15 inches by 11, whatever that is in metric. Uh, so here we go, uh, wet the paper, I'm going to use three brushes, I'm going to lay in with the, with the hake, but I, I want it to wet the paper, and I'm going to use my new mop, my goat hair mop, number six, Pro Art Renaissance, <coughs> lovely brush, it cost me £12.40 including postage, so it's pretty, not cheap, but it's a lot cheaper than the French SAB squirrel hair equivalent which is an absolutely beautiful brush. Uh, right, I'll wet the paper all over. You can leave little bits of sparkle here and there, if you wish. Okay, now I've warmed it up with a bit of, bit of sienna, I've become a little freezing cold. But we can create what season we like and we can paint it how we like. We use what colours we like. Don't beat yourself up if you find it at the beginning a bit difficult, especially using the hake. It just takes a lot of practice and I emphasise a lot. Some will be better at it or quicker than others, but I'm a great believer in using the largest, largest, largest brush possible. Uh, just a little bit in the uh, snow and um, we'll have a bit of cloud so I'll mix a little bit of red, light red with the ultramarine. That gives a nice cloudy sort of colour. Uh, So there's our bit of a snowy sort of sky. It's not really, but it'll do. Uh, right, now I'm going to, uh, I did a similar one on uh, f Saturday morning <coughs> where I, I had a fairly low horizon and I put in a pond and all sorts of pine trees and things. Uh, so let's, we'll put in some, some nice autumn colours on the tree, so a bit of burnt sienna. That's more burnt umber because I mixed a lot of paints grey with it. So I'll mix a bit of red just to brighten up a bit. So let's... No, I'm going to use my, my mop. I'll use this for text, the take, for texturing. Okay, so, so let's get some nice colours stronger than that. With this brush you need to have some water on it, it, it won't uh, be thick, the paint won't be thick enough otherwise. I'm going to mix in a bit of green with that, a bit of, a bit of um, paint grey with a lemon yellow and the uh, sienna. Uh, 
quite thick. It's it's difficult with this brush to to get it strong because if it, if you dry brush with it, the the paint t uh, the brush tends to split. So let's get some let's get some ultramarine in there and the sienna. Put a little bit of blue in, I think. Sort of a background. Like a dry brush. As we go, it's just a bit of reclipped paper. You can tell I'm not really used to using the uh, mops because I don't practice with them. But uh, Put in some of this just with a finger line, just scrape out some trees on the horizon. Uh, get some nice good red in there. Okay, so this is all a very simple background. As that dries, we can add to it, put some detail in. And now let's just put in a bit of, I'll use the hake now for a bit of, bit of texture. So I prefer the, the marks the hake makes. dark in there, these just some sort of thistles and stuff just sticking up above the, the snow when we put it in. Oh, let's just use the bits of the hake and dry, sort of dry brush it now. Things you can't, are not so easy with, well, I was going to say it's so easy with the, uh, with the mop, but uh, let's have a nice bit of a, bit of a bush here. Get some nice dark in, in here. This is where you want your, your darkest colours. In the foreground, warm, but but dark. So I'm using red, light red, and Payne's grey to give a nice darkish red. Uh, okay. Just some little bits of grass and stuff. <coughs> oh, excuse me, I've been coughing this morning. Build up on some of these here. I've got to connect it all, all together in a minute, but I'm going to put the uh, the guts of it in first. <coughs> oh. Right, um, while that's uh, 
doing. I'm, I'm going to just go back into these trees now and I'm going to try to dry brush some Payne's Grey and some Burnt Sienna. Try and keep the hairs together. So we'll, we'll put in a bit of Put a bit of bit in here. And we'll uh, put some trunks going up in in there. Don't do you know, the whole skeleton of the tree, just show bits of it because you will have clumps of twigs in front. Uh, just Well, we can finish off with the rigor, but this is. Uh, I need to dry a bit because I'm going to put some. This is just a bush. These are trees. This is a bush, but it doesn't really register yet. Okay, let's uh, use the, the, the mop again. <coughs> oh, so a bit of bit of light red and a bit of bit of ultramarine. Well, show some some shadow being cast. We'll assume that the shadows are coming from the from the right, so okay. So early snow. I'm just going to get a bit of a dry, so mute your sound. Go. And this, this is a really simple exercise. We're not doing very much. It's Somebody's coming up here. Quite often, where you get little bits of uh, grass or stuff sticking up, you get a bit of a hole. <coughs> I just wet round it, where the snow has not settled quite. 
Okay, now we'll give some scale to it, so we'll do a figure <coughs> or two um, coming up the, the hill here. I'll use a bit of bit of red, I think. Ready sort of colour anyway. There's plenty of red on it. <coughs> right, so not quite quite a large. Okay, so it gives a bit of scale, and it's not a very good figure. But a good example, but <coughs> okay. So, well, there's a bit of a bit of rigor stuff now. Right, <coughs> I don't think my figure's very good. <coughs> oh, but it's a. Uh, oops. That's just a bit too long to do a decent thing. So I'm going to put a couple of birds in and then. Okay, but, uh, let's put them out on it. <coughs> it's all part of the how to do series. Uh, these are very simple washes with, with, with the with the mop brush. Very nice brush, but I think the hake is my sort of major tool in the arsenal. Right, um, let's put in this one out again. I like this one. Okay. So, how to paint a simple early snow scene in watercolour. <coughs> now, looking at it, I don't think uh, the, the, there's, too, there's, there's too much red here. And, and it's it, it's all a bit one plainly, so you have to watch out for that. You want your warm colours in the front, your cooler colours in the middle. We have got cool colours, but maybe we've uh, overdone that. But um, but it's an early snow scene made up, so I don't think it's too bad. Walk on Headley, Headley Heath. There's any pat patterns that I don't really like. Uh, that I'm not. So keen on that but <coughs> but we'll uh I mean it'll burn just a bit <coughs> a bit strong because I use too much water in, in it it's just that do more like a, a bird of prey now right thanks for watching I hope you enjoyed that see you soon bye bye